Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will explain what you can do in order to make millions of gold during the first few days of patch 10.2 and I will really try to explain what are, in my opinion, the most important things and really the things that are going to be the most profitable. As always, keep in mind many of the different items and activities I'm going to talk about in today's video might not be as relevant maybe one or two weeks after the launch of the patch. So if you really want to make a lot of gold, you want to do some of these things first thing when you arrive in the Emerald Dream. And again, the first people who will be able to start selling and doing some of these different activities will be the ones who will make the most gold. So again, if really your objective is to make tons of gold, I would recommend you to do some of these different activities. But of course, if you're not in a hurry and you don't really care about making millions of gold, don't worry, many of these different things will still be good even throughout the patch. And so you'll still probably be able to make some gold even if you don't really focus on that during the first few days. Also, before I start diving into the list of all these different activities and items, I think it's important to mention that if you really want to make a lot of gold, you might need to do some cross-realm trading because whether it is for all the different items you're going to craft or the different items you're going to farm, you might need to sell them on different realms. And also for some of them, it might be easier to sell them on specific realms. So for instance, if you're getting a really good berry from the new raid, it might be easier for you to sell it on a high pop realm rather than a low pop realm. Same if you get one of the new PvP recipes or you're able to craft new items, it might be good for you to try and sell them on multiple realms instead of one because like that you might be able to make even more gold very, very fast. But again, this is only if you really want to be super optimal and you don't have to do that. It's really just I would say a really good plus and again, something that can help you make even more gold. Okay, let's start with number one. And at number one, what you want to do is go in the new raid and farm all the new BOEs in Eric difficulty. So like with the over raids from Dragonflight, basically you will only be able to get BOEs up to Eric difficulty. All the different items that are normally BOEs will be binds when picked up in mythic difficulty and only maybe one month from now, they will become BOEs. So right now it means that the highest quality and high level you will be able to farm will be from Eric difficulty. And this is why you really want to make sure to farm all these different items in Eric difficulty. So in total, we will have nine new BOEs. As always, there are two for cloth, two for lever, two for mail, two for plate, and we also have one ring. So again, in Eric difficulty, all these different items will probably be like 470 high level, something like that. And so definitely, if you manage to get some of them, especially during the first few days, you will probably be able to sell them for a lot of gold. Keep in mind, again, if you're playing on a realm where unfortunately this type of items are not selling for a lot of gold, you can always transfer them for free on over realms. And like that, you might be able to sell them faster and for more gold. In order to farm these different BOEs, I would say that the main requirement is going to be your eye level. So unfortunately, if you don't have a very good eye level, maybe this is not going to be something possible for you. You can always try to also do it in normal mode. When you have a good eye level, what you want to do is go in the raid Dragonflight uh, pre-made groups. And here you want to type BOE. And usually you will find a lot of groups that will be available. And then you just want to apply. If you're playing on a tank or heal, usually you will probably be able to find a group a little bit faster. But really, I would say the eye level is what is going to be the most important thing. Now, at number two, we're still going to have the raid. But this time, what you want to do is actually kill all the different bosses in all the different difficulties in order to have a chance at getting some of the new designs, patterns, and recipes that you can then sell on the auction house. So all of them will drop from all different difficulties. And again, except as you can see, one or two, all of them are BOEs. And it means that you will then be able to sell them on the auction house. So we're not getting some very exciting ones. We're getting one plate elm, as you can see here, one conduit, but this one is bind when picked up. And then there is this formula. There is also this one right here, another conduit that this time is BOE. And then we have the design for another conduit, again, BOE. 
So this is really something that, again, during the first few days is going to be really good. A lot of people will want to start crafting all these different items. And so you will probably be able to sell them for hundreds of thousands of gold. And keep in mind, again, they drop also from NFR. So if, for instance, you don't have a good eye level and you can't find a group, maybe just join these different groups. I'm not sure if NFR will directly be available, but even normal. And like that, you will have a chance at getting some of these really good designs and recipes. Also, when you're killing all these different bosses, you will have a chance at getting a new material that will be needed for a couple of crafts. And this is the Dreaming Essence. So this is something that will definitely sell for maybe 50, 60,000 gold a piece during the first few hours and first few days. So again, by doing the raid, you will have a chance at getting the different BOEs that we talked about in number one. Also, these different Dreaming Essences and also all the different plants, recipes, and designs from the different bosses. And on the second boss, you will also have the overflowing satchel of preferred recipes. And basically here, you will be able to get some random recipes and plants from the two previous raids from Dragonfly. So this is also something that can be pretty interesting, even though a lot of them are now pretty cheap on most auction houses. After that, what you want to do is try to kill all the different rares in the new zone. And like that, you will have a chance at getting some really interesting green or blue BOEs that you can then sell in the auction house for quite a lot of gold. So as you can see, there are tons of these different rares, but not all of them have a chance at dropping some interesting items. So you really want to target the ones that we know will have a chance at dropping some of these interesting BOEs. So some of the best BOEs, I would say, are going to be all these different green trinkets. As you can see, they will have an eye level of 428, and all of them have really interesting uh, stats and powers. So again, right now, we just know that, for instance, two of them drop from these different rares right here, and the other ones, it's not yet sure, but probably they will also drop from some of the different rares or maybe from some of the different treasures. Again, keep in mind, this is based on the information we have from the PTR. Maybe some of these different trinkets will become binds when picked up. But even in the previous patch, some of these different trinkets were still BOEs. And so I'm pretty sure some of them will still remain BOEs. Also, one thing that is not sure yet is whether you will be able to upgrade these different uh, items. So again, right now, the eye level is 428. But if you are able to actually upgrade them, then it means that they will sell for even more. Also, of course, you will be able to basically get a lot of all these different new green BOEs from the new zone. And normally, all these different green BOEs are high level 415. And as you can see, they're not supposed to be upgradable. But right now, based on what's available again in the PTR, as you can see, one of them is actually 421 high level. It is a blue item and you can also upgrade it. So I'm not sure if it will stay like that or not. I'm not sure if you have to do something specific in order to get these different blue BOEs. But if that's the case, I will make sure to cover this in another video. And this is also something you really want to do because right now we don't have a lot of BOE weapons. And something that can be upgraded with an eye level of 421 is definitely something that will sell for a lot of gold. Then at number four, we're going to talk about flipping. With any new patch and with any new content and new items, it's always good to try and find some cheap auctions that you can then sell for a lot of gold. As always, with a new patch, a lot of people are going to get some of these new items not really knowing the value. And so they're going to try to sell them for a very, very cheap price. And what you can do is try to snipe these different items and sell them back for a better price. Same with the different materials. This is always tricky because now that we have the region-wide auction house, it can really be difficult to reset the prices, but sometimes people will be able to do so. So again, maybe for instance, with some of the new materials, you want to try to look into ways to buy a part of it and try to sell them back for a higher price. But especially, I would say the ones that are going to be extremely interesting are all the new raid BOEs and also all the new recipes, especially the ones from PVP and also the ones from the new raid. So try to go on some websites like the Oribos exchange, try to see where some of these different items are being sold for a very, very low price. And then what you can do is transfer some gold on this realm 
buy the different items and then sell them back on another realm or even on this realm for a way better price. Keep in mind, flipping is always risky, even though at the beginning of an expansion, it's always, or at the beginning of a new patch, it's always a little bit easier. No. Keep in mind, flipping is always risky. So if you're deciding to do that, you will always take the risk of losing some of your gold. But again, it's also one of the best ways, in my opinion, to make some gold in World of Warcraft. And definitely the way I'm using the most to make probably 90% of my gold. So again, just make sure to understand what are the most interesting items and then try to target these different items, find them when they're cheap and sell them back for a better price. And again, for those of you who are not really familiar with this website, this is the Undermine Exchange. So here, for instance, you can type any name of any items, you can click on it. And then like that, you will be able to see where there are some available in your region and what are the cheapest auctions and on which realm. So this is really the best way to hunt for these different items. But of course, keep in mind, there are plenty of people doing it. And so sometimes it's very tricky to be the first one and to be able to buy these different auctions. Then at number six, what you want to do is try to get your hands on some of the new BOE plants and recipes for PVP. So like with each new season, you will be able to farm some of these new plants and recipes. Basically, in order to get some of them, you will need to do some PVP activities. So it can be, for instance, arenas, battlegrounds, also different outdoor activities, especially, for instance, trying to get some of the different PVP supply crates that will just drop from the sky. And also, you can always use your owner in order to then buy these different crates right here and have a chance at getting some of them. So here, really, the ones that are going to be the most interesting ones are, of course, uh, the different designs for dual crafting, you know, to craft the amulet and also the signet. But then you also have the ones from inscription to craft the different trinkets. And of course, you also have some like the cloak and everything that can also be good. So these definitely will sell for a lot of gold because some people will want to start crafting all these different items. And so if you're lucky enough and you manage, for instance, to get the design for the ring or for the amulet during the first days, definitely you will be able to sell it for hundreds of thousands of gold, depending again on which realm you're playing on. So this is definitely something that can be, I would say, good, especially if you're into PvP and you want to maybe farm a little bit of PvP. Uh, but this is really something that, again, will only be good during the first few days and probably like the first week, because after that, there's going to have many of them on the auction house and the value is going to drop a lot. Then, of course, at number seven, we'll still be talking about these different BOEs. And this time, what you want to do is actually craft some of them. So again, the ring, the cloak, the amulet, the trinkets are going to be some of the best ones. And if you really want to make a lot of gold with them, when you manage to get your hands on the different designs and recipes, what I would recommend you to do is to craft a bunch of them and then try to transfer them on multiple realms, especially the PvP realms and the high pop realms. And like that, you will probably be able to make a lot of gold during the first few days, because if you're only staying on your realm, you will maybe still be able to make a decent amount of gold, but you can really make even more if you decide to go on multiple realms. Then after that, we will have a new material that you can farm with skinning. And again, this is something you will be able to do when you are in the new zone, Amir Drasil. So this material is called the Dreaming Antler Fragment. And you will need one of them in order to craft these two conduits right here, the Dream Tenders Charm and the Verdant Conduit. So these are pretty interesting, especially this one. And so probably there's going to have a lot of people trying to get their hands on some of these. And basically in order to get one of these, you will need to kill this elusive Verdant Glade Warden, and you will have a small chance at getting one of them when skinning it. So unfortunately, I'm not into skinning and I was not able to test it myself, but Penguin did a really, really good video explaining exactly how it works. So I would encourage you to watch this video if you are interested in making some gold with this new material and with skinning. Then what you really want to do is start simply crafting all the different conduits and also the ancient weapons. So these different items are probably going to sell for a lot of gold during the first few days uh, again. And while they might be a little bit challenging because probably a lot of people are going to try to start crafting them as soon as possible, you might still be able to make quite a lot of profits if you manage to be amongst the first few people. 
So there is the Formula Ancient Weapon. Again, you can try to find it on the auction house. You can try to farm it yourself by doing the raid. Or also you have all the different conduits. So these ones, again, will probably sell for a lot of gold. And so this is really something I would recommend you to do. But again, keep in mind, this is really just a race to the first people who will manage to craft all these ones in max quality and then the later you will get and the less profit probably you will be able to make. After that, what you want to do is, especially if you have a character with inscription, you want to try to get your hands on the different techniques in order to craft the new contracts to get some more reputation with the new reputation and also to craft the new Ventus rune for the new raid. So these two things, again, will sell for a lot of gold. And so you really want to try to do that, especially if you have a character with inscription. So as you can see, in order to craft the contract with the Dream Wardens, the new reputation, you will simply need to open some of the different treasures called the World Super Bloom uh, Drop. So this is something that will probably take you a few try because this is basically just based on luck. But this is really something you want to do and hopefully you will be able to get this technique soon enough. And then for the different Ventus runes here this time, you will need to open the World Dream Seed Cash Drop. And again, you will have a small chance at getting the technique and then you will be able to craft this new Ventus rune. After that, if one of your characters has enchanting, what you want to do is go in the new zone and open all the new treasures with this character. So as you can see, you have plenty of them. And again, they're all located on this map. And basically, you want to do that because inside these different treasures, you will have a small chance at getting some of the different formulas in order to craft the new crests. So in total, you have three new crests. And as you can imagine, these are going to be very, very high in demand. And this is something you can craft through the crafting order system, but you will still probably be able to make some gold with them. So definitely something that you want to do. And hopefully you will be able to get this different formula pretty easily. Then again, you want to open the different treasures called Emerald, Bounty, Plump, Dream Seed on a character that has alchemy in order to have a chance at getting the recipe to craft the new Dreamwalker's healing potion. As you can see, this is a really, really good eating potion and definitely something that I'm sure will sell pretty well. So again, if you have a player with like me, try to open this type of treasures and hopefully you will be able to get your hands on this new recipe. Finally, if you have a character with engineering, what you want to do is try to get your hands on this new schematic in order to craft the portable party platter, which is a new toy. So in order to get this new schematic, you will need to go through the discovery, witness a display of confectionery conjuration. So I'm not exactly sure how exactly you will be able to get this done. But when this is done, you will receive the schematic and then you will be able to craft this new toy. And again, even if it's a toy, trust me, if you're amongst the first people crafting it, especially if you decide to sell it across many realms, you will probably be able to sell it for hundreds of thousands of gold at least during the first few days or first few weeks. So definitely something that you want to keep in mind if you have a character with injury. And of course, for now, we're not sure exactly how to get it. But as soon as we know, I will make sure to either do a video or you can also check wood because they do a lot of guides on these type of things. So these are all the different items and activities that I really wanted to mention in today's video. I'm sure there are plenty of other things that I haven't mentioned and probably also a lot of things that we will only discover with the release of patch 10.2 on Wednesday. But I hope that this list will at least help you to see a little bit more clear in terms of what you need to do and how exactly you will be able to make some gold with this new patch. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great start of the week. Bye.